How's it going, Saran Segway guys? So I want to um, talk about the Kaniwaba pedal kit now that I've had it for a little over three months. And uh, just some things that uh, you should probably look out for and some suggestions if you're gonna buy a pedal kit or you're thinking about it. So, um, first off, I mean, uh, when it comes to this pedal kit, hopefully they continue to keep on innovating. There are some issues that most people run into due to improper installation, and that's gonna be the chain tension on the uh, little split sprocket and, um, and this free wheel adapter. So um, on the Kaniwaba installation video, they tell you to, uh, you know, while these bolts are loose, go ahead and run the motor. And when it runs the motor uh, and it spins, um, it's gonna go ahead and align the two, well, the sprocket to the uh, freewheel. But that doesn't really work that well. I kind of find it similar to like when they say to like um, align your brake caliper, you know, loosen the caliper bolts, squeeze the lever, and then tighten it down. Sometimes that doesn't always work, and then you just gotta eyeball the gap. Um, what I found works better for me is when I loosen these bolts, and I and I check for the slack on this chain. Um, you know, I'll slide I'll slide the actual free wheel thing back and forth until I have the most amount of slack on that chain, and then I'll tighten it down, and then I'll spin the wheel backwards. It's kind of hard to do one handed. Sorry. So the bike doesn't fall off. So I'll spin the wheel backwards and look for hard spots or any type of chain binding. And if that's the case, it's not centered. So if that's the case, go ahead and loosen it, slide it back and forth until you until you get you know a decent amount of uh, slack, so it's not too tight. So if you're spinning the wheel backwards, it's not really going to work well on um, on this uh, setup right here because. Uh, because my stand's too wide for these uh, these uh, unicycle.com pedals. But um, yeah, if you're spinning it backwards um, and the chain gets tight or you, you have trouble moving the, um, the actual wheel, then yeah, again, it's gonna be too tight and you're gonna have to loosen these bolts and then slide it back and forth and then find that good, good spot where the, um, the chain tension is, is pretty loose. So, that's that's the main issue that people had. I've seen some broken chains on some Facebook groups, and that's more than likely due to installing it by the way Kaniwaba tells you to do it, and then um, you know not adjusting the uh, free wheel adapter back and forth to make sure the tension is more uniform. So if you are on the fence about this because you've heard about some of these chains or seen photos of these chains breaking, it's, you know, more than well i would say it is likely due to just bad alignment so you know there is some run out on these on these free wheels you see like how the actual free wheel moves when the, when it's free wheeling it, it there's like it sort of oscillates so um you know the chain will the chain will do fine rolling forward but there are going to be tight spots when you're actually going through the pedal stroke, when you're actually spinning the adapter, and you can't really, you can't really um, simulate that running the motor forward. And the easiest way to do it is to spin the wheel backwards. So when you spin the wheel backwards, if you know you feel the wheel get tight and not move, and you and the chain makes a popping sound like the chain will bind and pop, then it's definitely too tight, and the chain will more than likely fail. So I think they should update their installation instructions on really dialing in the chain tension because spinning the motor forward it, it didn't do it for me and I'm like based on what I've seen it, it didn't do it for a lot of people so um, and most people have been dialing it in themselves the people like me who've um, I mean some people have these on their 72 volt bikes uh, and have taken the bike you know north of 70 with this free wheel on there without any issues so and people are saying, oh, I broke it going like 25 miles per hour, uh, just riding around in my neighborhood. Um, that's definitely a, a chain, you know, a chain alignment issue or the, a, a sprocket alignment issue. So um, that's one thing I really wanted to address because I understand people have been reluctant because there are those 
uh, rumors about the changes, you know, or the, just the build quality not being that great. Of course, it could be better. Uh, I mean, like, no one's a fan of the split sprocket up there. And then on the older kits, um, the uh, there's no flat spot. And actually, you can actually see a little mark there because I uh, I used a, a Dremel and um, cut a little, uh, little uh, I guess, crescent shape in there for the... Uh, for the bolts to bite into so it doesn't slip anymore when I'm putting a lot of torque on it. Yeah, so um, the other issues that I had was, um, since my bike was so old, like my uh, kickstand hardware was actually different from what comes on the uh, new bikes. And I, I kind of explained it in my earlier video where, um, where there was like a separate bushing from this bolt that I had to prep, you know, like hammer out and press in. And uh, if I ever have to take this kickstand off, it's, uh, I'm probably gonna not get that bushing out. But this two-piece design, um, it's not that great. So there's a little little screw down here um, that mine is kind of messed up. And um, I was getting some, uh, some movement on, on this part of the kickstand. As you can see, it's like two separate pieces. This, this triangle piece is a separate piece. I don't know if that's the same design as the current one that they're selling now but um, this was getting loose on me. I tightened it up and I noticed the uh, little alignment, alignment uh, it's like a recessed Allen bolt. That thing was like bent, but you know, I got it in there and it's not, it's not moving around that much. So it's doing okay. And then when it comes down to the cranks, um, <clears throat> so for the cranks, the ones that actually come with the Connie Wobble pedal kit, really lightweight, aluminum, very nice quality, um, not very durable. So um, as I stated in a previous video, when I did have a little, uh, well, one of my coworker had a little tip over, uh, this this uh, left side crank bent inward and then the pedaling was all funky. And then I ordered these uh, shorter cranks from unicycle.com. I think these are, I, I forget, if you look at my older videos, um, I specify which one it is. And then I also ordered uh, these uh, um, these other unicycle cranks from Bell's Bikes on Amazon, and these took forever to get to me. That that's why they weren't in my previous video. These are like super beefy. This thing it like weighs like at least a pound. It's heavy. Um, it's super heavy. It's very similar. I mean, it's, it's definitely steel, just like just like those. And these are the same length. These are the same length as the. Um, honey wobble ones so I would go with the four inch ones these are five inch um, one I, I forget the length uh, but um, I would go with the shorter cranks simply because with these I was actually getting pedal strikes so these are just gonna be like a backup if I bend those and I'll probably run these until I break those but I'll probably order another set from unicycle.com um, as, as I'm running these right here so it's cool that it came with little end caps though. I, I lost one on the other side. I'm not gonna put it on because um, because of the dimensions of the uh, of the unicycle.com cranks. Like you can actually see the the, the nut is kind of sticking out a little bit, so it won't be it won't be flush, and it'll, I'll probably lose it again. So all in all, after about you know a little over three months of riding this, I would say like maybe four to five days a week, mostly on dirt, 99% on dirt. Um, it's held up pretty well. I mean, I haven't had any chain binding issues. Um, even installing that the primary dry 219 chain, um, I didn't have to readjust my, my, uh, my sprocket. So um, in terms of like, what could Kaniwaba do to make it better? Uh, it's, it's, really, it's really difficult to to say I mean I was thinking it would be cool if they had like a little like like template kind of bushing thing kind of like a jig where it would space both of the sprockets in, in a manner where they're more lined up but the problem with that is the jack shafts on different years are different so I don't think it would work and then you know just the dimensions of everyone's bike is going to be a tad bit different when it comes to alignment I mean, people say, oh, you know, put a chain tensioner on there. And I suppose you could do that, but then, you know, you're gonna get some more noise. I mean, you could probably mount um, mount something on, uh, 
Well, the swing arm moves. Well, maybe, maybe you can mount something here on, on that little, little uh, tab that's spring loaded that'll move and give it some tension and maybe run a half link or a different size sprocket so that uh, there's tension on the chain and uh, you know, it's more uh, variable. So people won't have issues with chain bind and chain breakage. But other than that, I mean, they did push the kit out pretty quickly, made revisions based on, you know, the initial kit. I think it's good for what it is. It's still definitely the best um, pedal kit out there for this bike. Uh, whether you're on the fence of getting one or not, um, if you feel like it would give you that peace of mind or you need it for legal purposes, yeah, th this is definitely the one to get over the, the Luna one, or not Luna one, but the actual Saron factory one because it's gonna serve you better. You don't have to run it with the chain on there. Um, if you're gonna be in places that, that don't need it, you can also pull off the, the actual crank arms and then run your pegs if you need to. But like, yeah, if you live in an area where enforcement's um, pretty up there, your bike can get impounded or, you know, you could get a ticket, then definitely just having that peace of mind is, is worth it in my opinion. So, you know, everyone's gonna be different. Uh, some people are in the group of people where it's like, hey, you know, as long as I'm being courteous, it shouldn't matter. But, you know, me on the other hand, I do like being compliant, um, you know, especially when it comes to those types of laws. Because uh, where I'm in, in Southern California, e-bike enforcement is like hit or miss. But when it comes to motorized bicycles, there's a long history, especially in South Orange County, where especially if you're going faster than 30 miles per hour, the, the, you know, the traffic police will impound your bike and it's pretty much going to be gone. So, you know, with, with the Saron, it's great that it has an eco mode out of the box that keeps you in that zone. But, you know, just, you know, another peace of mind thing that I did was I geared it down like crazy using the 219 lower gearing kit and the 64G sprocket. So even in max power, which is technically not compliant, it would it would never break 30 miles per hour. So um, at least in that in that sense, if they tried to radar it, uh, it would be OK. But yeah, going back to the pedal kit, uh, it's still the best one out there that's available. And if you need pedals, to be legal, especially pedals that actually propel the bike, spin the wheel, then this is really the only option, um, unless you're okay with riding, hanging off the uh, the swing arm, which is just, I don't know, that, that that's just such a terrible design. So yeah, I mean, you know, pros and cons, this thing's not the best design either. I'm sure there are improvements that can be made on it. And hopefully, hopefully Connie Waba does make some improvements on it. So I, I understand other people have been testing different size um, free wheels and different, uh, you know, chain lengths, stuff like that. So yeah, you can do that. It's kind of annoying though, because you do need to have a free wheel tool and like a vice to, to get that free wheel off. So that would, that's not going to be feasible for most people. But right now, as long as you, you really take your time getting that alignment dialed in, then you're not going to have any issues. So. Yeah, a lot of people, again, have been running this kit for as long as I have. Um, I ordered it as soon as it became available and they haven't had any issues. But on the flip side, there are people that had it and they've had, you know, the chain break. And again, that's gonna be due to alignment um, and user error. So definitely, um, you know, when it comes down to it, really take your time on the chain tension again. Um, if the method that they show you in the install video doesn't work for you and you're spinning the wheel backwards, it gets tight, the chain gets super tight, then just switch to my method where you loosen the bolts, slide, slide the, the free wheel adapter back and forth until you have good slack on here, the most amount of slack. And then tighten it up, spin the wheel backwards, and when you stop getting any type of bind or popping, then um, you're good, okay? So that's pretty much it on the pedal kit. Um, yeah, if you're gonna order it, I would just order the power pedal kit without the cranks, without the pedals, um, unless you're like super concerned about weight. Then if you're super concerned about weight, uh, then these are really lightweight, and, um, but they do have a bigger footprint because they're, they're aluminum. So the steel is gonna take up less space, obviously, but the unicycle.com uh, four inch 
four inch uh, cranks I think are better. In terms of pedal stroke, doesn't really make a difference to me, but my pedals aren't hitting stuff on the trail anymore. So, you know, that, that to me is, is a big factor. Like, you know, when you're going through technical stuff and right it out areas, if your pedal's hitting the ground, that, that kind of sucks, especially on a bike that weighs, you know, 120 pounds. All right, guys, so that's it. Um, just make sure when you guys are taking stuff off to mark your bolts so you can keep an eye out on, on if they're backing out. All right, have a good one, everyone. Ride safe.